On rare occasions, we get to witness moments of sheer genius. This is not one of those moments. <laughs> Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. And let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. So they don't even have a straight line to a tangent point anymore. But our, our question is more specific and nuanced. How do you get an elevation angle measurement from a curved line? Because that's where you're measuring. You're standing holding a sextant. Yeah, not to, from. That's why I laugh when they bring calculate, calculus into it. <laughs> calculus has got nothing to do with it at all. Well, the, the globe Earth does use calculus. They use the Haversine formula to turn the flat plane they just measured uh, to project that up onto the celestial sphere. Can you explain that Haversine formula? Yeah, I, in you simple took the words out of my mouth, Ted. Say that again. I have dual bachelors in mechanical and electrical engineering. Okay, so with that, I assume that you've done calculus. Is that true? Yes. Well, the Haversine formula is where they take the flat plane that you're actually measuring, and then they apply it to the sky by bending the line using calculus. Did you know that, Brian? Wow, that's new to me. Brian mentioned it before. It just needs to be dumbed down for yeah, people like me. I do remember it a couple of weeks ago. But, and me. The, the Haversine formula. I uh, first when I looked into it, I actually got it wrong on what it was. But, uh, well, not really wrong, but it, basically what it, what it is, is, is a globe correction for a globe problem. So they correct the distance uh, into a curved distance, not the south mostly. Because it's, it's based on the Great Circle routes mostly, which is north to south, along the children routes. So they're just basically showing, they're just basically correcting uh, from a flat uh, universal transverse Mercator position to um, to a north to south globe, uh, curve globe distance. That's what they're doing. That's, it's a, a globe correction for a globe problem. Rue Hiff is very good at explaining how he utilized it in his presentation. After he took the flat plane, it, you got to understand it's a flat plane. So that's important. And then, then he applied it after he got his angles and applied it in the celestial sphere. Then he applied the Haversine formula to turn it into a globe. This is Rue Hiff explaining celestial navigation to John Refracted Curvature. We'll pick it up after Ruhif has applied all of the necessary corrections to the elevation angles that he was given. See if you can spot the point where Ruhif sneaks in calculus. Now we've made all the necessary corrections. All we need to do is add them to the measured angles to get our true elevation uh, or true altitude. Okay, so the next step is to work out how far away over the surface we are from the GP based on our elevation angle. Uh, now, I'm sure you've heard two phrases thrown around before, and they are minus from 90 and 69 miles per degree. But where do these come from? And what is the geometry that explains them? Now, the minus from 90 part is pretty simple. We have got our observer at the 12 o'clock position here again, and he's measured an altitude angle to a star, uh, and we'll call that angle alpha. Uh, obviously in this diagram, the red dotted line is the observer's horizontal and the black dotted line is his vertical. Pay attention guys, there's no curved baseline involved. The observer's horizontal is simply an imaginary line that's perpendicular to his zenith. That's all it is. No curvature, nothing of the sort. So they are perpendicular to each other. So the complement to that angle alpha is angle beta. Uh, so beta is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. And that is where the minus from 90 phrase comes from. Uh, most flat earthers think it's a right angle triangle between the observer, the GP and the star. And that's just not the case. The, the minus from 90 has absolutely nothing to do with the GP. It's simply giving us the angle beta, uh, which is called the co-altitude. And that's the angle that we really need when we're doing celestial navigation.
So tools like a theodolite uh, can measure the co-altitude angle directly because it's on stable ground, uh, can easily, easily establish a, a vertical reference. Uh, a marine sextant, on the other hand, is presumably on a boat that is rocking around on the ocean, so it can't establish a stable vertical. And that's why it uses the horizon as a reference point and then adjusts that angle up to horizontal using dip correction. All right, anyway, where do we get 69 miles per degree? Well, that comes from the fact that the stars are an enormous distance away, such that the light coming from the star is arriving at the observer and at the GP in parallel lines. So those two yellow lines are parallel. What we can do is move that angle beta down to be at the center of the Earth. And now what we have is a sector of a circle. And that's how we'll work out the distance over the surface between the observer at S and the GP at G. So let's say the, the altitude angle that we observed was 60 degrees, which means our co-altitude angle beta is 30, uh, and therefore the angle it forms at the center uh, of the Earth is also 30 degrees. Uh, so what is the distance between the observer and the GP? Well, that's just the proportion of the whole circle. So if our angle is 30 degrees, then that is 1 12th of a 360 degree circle. So the arc length of that sector is simply 1 12th of the circumference of that circle. Pretty easy. Uh, and the circumference of a circle is obviously a function of its radius. So let's plug in 3959 miles as a radius. The circumference is two times pi times the radius, which is 24,875 miles. I can just hear Nathan now. Where did you get your radius from? Well, a lot of people have measured the circumference of the Earth using the Eratosthenes method, Nathan. In fact, Bob the Science Guy and I did it three years ago. The best result we got was with the six-foot pole that I used. I came out with 24,874 miles. Not too shabby, huh? And 24,875 miles circumference on a 360 degree circle is 69.1 miles per degree. And this linear relationship between the angle and the distance from the GP is derived from the Earth being a globe and only if the stars are very far away. So one of the big challenges for my opponent is to show the geometry for his model that justifies this 69 miles per degree. Okay, so you can either use the 69.1 miles per degree or 111 kilometers per degree, uh, or like I've done here, use 60 nautical miles per degree. And that will give you the distance you are from each of the GPs. All right, final step, uh, and this part really is the nail in the coffin for flat earth. Uh, the final step is drawing circles of equal altitude. And a circle of equal altitude is simply the set of all points on the surface where the observer would measure that elevation angle to that particular star. Uh, and the observer could be at any point on that circle. So in this example on screen, uh, let's say the GP of the star is over Louisiana. Uh, we need to find all the points on the surface that are, for example, uh, 1,000 nautical miles away from the GP. The question is, what formula am I going to use? The Haversine formula. All right, the Haversine formula determines the great circle distance between two points on a sphere, given their longitudes and latitudes. Important in navigation, it is a special case of a more general formula in spherical trigonometry, the law of Haversines, that relates the sides and angles of spherical triangles. In fact, more correctly, I'm going to be using the inverse Haversine formula. So the Haversine formula gives you the distance between two known points, uh, where the inverse Haversine, uh, you give it a latitude and a longitude, and then you tell it a distance and a bearing, and it will tell you the coordinates of where you will end up. Now, I would like to plot my circles in Google Earth. Uh, but the built-in circle tool on Google Earth actually uses a slightly different formula called the Vincenti formula, uh, which takes into account the, the slight oblateness of the Earth. Uh, but the correct formula for celestial navigation is the Haversine, so I ended up writing some Python code uh, to draw my circles for me.
here's what it looks like in Google Earth. Uh, and where these circles intersect is my position fix. So this is it, zoomed right in, uh, just so we can see how tightly these three circles intersect. So my position fix, uh, which looks to be accurate to within about two nautical miles, is 31 degrees, 11.1 .1 minutes south, 15 degrees, 36.9 minutes east. So you measured a flat plane, he applied his measurements of a flat plane to a flat Earth celestial sphere model, and then applied this mathematics to convert the flat plane he measured and then plotted on a flat Earth map up to the sky and call the sky the ground because it becomes the surface. Ruhiv didn't do any of those things you said, Nathan. You guys are desperate. You're just making things up. Ruhiv showed you exactly how it works. What's your opinion, Gladys? Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought too. We'll see you guys on the next one. That's all, folks.